welcome into this place. Say it. Lift those hands into this place. Welcome into this broken place. Sing it out. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to our services here at the uh, Mount Island uh, Missionary Baptist Church. We are proud this morning because our services will start a little differently uh, this morning. We will actually start uh, with baptism, and that's a good thing in the Mount Island. It's a good thing. It is a good thing. Thank God, thank God that another person, another soul uh, has been saved. Uh, this morning we're about to take our dear new to be sister, uh, Sister Kendra Benson, to the water uh, to be baptized. And Kendra, I just need you to stand uh, just for a few moments. And I want to tell you, first of all, that the Lord is proud. He's proud of you. Uh, the angel of heaven are rejoicing. Uh, We've already talked, Kendra, and I want to just ask you again, do you still believe uh, that, uh, that Jesus died for you? And do you believe that his death was enough to save you? And do you want to be baptized? Amen. Amen. In a moment, we're about to take you to the water. And I want you, I want you to understand something about the water. Uh, the water, water baptism is just symbolic. And it, it, it identifies you with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. We're gonna, in a moment, we're gonna take you and we're gonna stand you up in the water as Jesus stood on that cross. Uh, we're gonna stand you up in the water as Jesus stood on the cross. But we also know we're gonna take you under the water. That means we're gonna submerge you as Jesus was placed on a grave. So now you're identifying with his death. But we know that our Lord didn't stay in the grave. So we're not going to leave you in the water. We're going to take you out of the water. And that's going to signify the resurrection of Jesus. Now you will be a new creation, a new creature. Not because of what the water has done. It's because of the fact that you've not put faith in what Jesus has done. Amen. And now our church family, they're going to go in song as we make our way to the water. Would you join me this morning, uh, Mount Olive, as we sang, take me to the water.
I'd like to say good morning. Good morning. Today, uh, I know the world is in a bad shape to look like to us. But yet, God is still in charge. And we have lost, a lot of times we have lost our peace because we're looking around and seeing what's going on. But God gave us some instruction to how to keep our peace. He said in Proverbs 3 and 1, he said, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my command. And the second one said, For the length of days and long life and peace shall, uh, shall they be added to thee. Let not, thy, let not thy mercy and thy truth forsake thee. Bind them about your neck. Write them on the tapes of your heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Keep those words and we will have God's peace. Amen. 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 God, I great Jehovah, give him to the very
Y'all be happy this morning. Yes, yes, Now let's bow ahead for a brief word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, yes, we come now, Father, just rejoicing and just Thank giving you praise, Father, for, Thank you. for another soul saved. Thank you. Thank you. We are so happy this morning, Father. Yes, we just thank you for your glory that poured down on this young lady and, and led her to baptism oh, and accepting yeah. your only begotten son as our Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. We, we thank you for that, Father. Thank we you. pray that what she's done here this morning will be an inspiration to others yes. that they can come and, and partake of this, this faith that we have. Yes. Father, we just thank you for being so good to us, Father. We thank just thank you for making the decision a long time ago to create man. But the best part of that decision, Father, you, you knew he was going to need a Savior. Yeah. And you decided then that you would give your only begotten Son to come down to Amen. a mean old world Thank you. and be crucified to save, to redeem mankind back to you. Oh, yeah. And we just thank you for that. Thank you. But you didn't allow him to stay there. You raised him on that third day. Now he's sitting there with you in heaven, intercession, making intercession for all of mankind and for us this morning. We just thank you for that. Yeah. Now, Father, we just want to ask you now that you just. Go with us and stand by us. Pacify our minds and our hearts, Father. We live in a world now where there's a whole lot going on in our lives. Yes, yes. In this state and in the world all, all around us, Father. We, yes. we came to the conclusion that we can only lean on you now because we're not safe nowhere we go. All right. And we just need to, Father, just to take care of us. Yes. Uh, keep us safe from danger seen and unseen, Father. Yes, Lord. And uh, we'll give you glory and honor for it, Father. Yes. Father, we want to pray for the sick and uh, bereaved families this morning, Father, that have lost their loved ones, Father. Mm -hmm. We know what went on out there in Texas, losing them 10 year old Father. Oh, That's got to hurt. Yes. That has got to hurt. And Lord, we just ask now that you just pull your love out on them and just let them know that you's God Almighty. You're just too wise to make a mistake, Father. Yes. And Lord, we just want to thank you for another day. Thank, thank you for you. this congregation. And we ask that you bless each family here individually and collectively, Father, bless, bless us all with the blessing that we stand in need of. We give you glory and honor, and it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Jesus. Amen. 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 Good morning. The vision of the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church. The primary foundation for the vision of the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church is based on the Gospel of Habakkuk 2, verses 1 and 2, which I, which declares, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that read of it. The vision that God has given our pastor is to help families grow holistically, that is spiritually, financially, socially, emotionally, by showing what we can accomplish when we are God ruled and to cause positive change in our communities through the lifting of the name of Jesus Christ. Will you please stand as, as we recite our mission statement? Mount Olive is a church where Jesus is Lord. God's love is transferred through a ministry of teaching, preaching, praying, healing, and joyfully giving. Our spiritual gifts are being utilized. Furthermore, members are taught to value the word, true worship, and love for one another. As minds are renewed, lives are transformed, and life's purposes are found. Thank you. <clears throat> Celebrations for the week of June 5th through the July. The week of June 5th. Birthdays. On the 6th of June, we have Portia Shepherd. On the 7th, Pamela Robertson. And on the 10th, Sister Mary Turner.
your kindness and thoughtfulness. This comes from the Taylor family. Good morning, man. Good morning. Good morning. That's a big crowd out there, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Big crowd out there. Glad that y'all came to join with us this morning. And our pastoral passage this morning comes from Matthew chapter 8. You will rise with us. And it starts with verse 23, verse, going through verse 27. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch the ship was covered with waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? And God bless the hearers and doers of his word. morning, Mount Olive. Good Amen. Good to see you this morning. It is, as always, it's good uh, to be here. Uh, can I just have a moment with you this morning and, and be open with you? Um, have you ever had a moment of, of, of time in your life where you began to question uh, your successes? You, you couldn't see yourself making progress. Anybody ever been there? You look at your life and you begin to wonder, you know, am I doing anything that I need to be doing? Where am I in this spot? And I've been in one of those places recently. I've been in that spot trying to figure out what is it that I have I reached my end or, or is there more for me to do or is this part of my life over or What's next for me? I don't know if you've ever been that. And most times we don't share those kind of moments with people because we don't want people to know that we actually have those those type moments. But I'm human. And so I've had human moments that I began to wonder about some stuff. And ironically, last evening, um, I had the privilege of watching uh, or listening to an interview uh, with uh, Reverend T.D. Jakes did with uh, Pastor Keon Henderson. Uh, Keon Henderson pastors uh, a large church also in Houston and uh, has several, a matter of fact, 82 businesses. He has done this. And T.D. Jakes asked him a question in the interview. He said, what, what, what did you pass by to get here? And the question, he said, not, not, I'm not asking you what did you have to pass by to get to this interview. And I want to ask you the same question this morning, Mount Olive, and I had to ask myself, what have you had to pass by, Philip White, to get here? He mm-hmm. said, so one of the problems with successful people and people that are experiencing success, Earl, is that he says you live in one or two places and you don't live in the other place. You live in your past or you're always trying to get to your future. And in the process of living in your past, you're looking at your failures most times. And and if you're looking at your future, you're trying to figure out where you're going. And most times what we do is that we miss where we are. Lord have mercy. I'm talking to somebody this morning because maybe you've been caught up in your past too. You've been caught up in your past. And so he asked this young preacher, he said, what is it? He said, I already know some stuff about you because I'm your mentor. But what is it that you had to pass by here to get here? Can I just tell you a little bit about his story? I, I invite you to go watch the interview when you leave because somewhere along the way you're going to be able to identify with what this young man had to go through. The young man grew up in a church and um, he, he, was, he got the chance to, to, to minister to the pastor. He 
he, he carried the pastor's Bible and he would wipe off the pastor when he was sweat. He was he was always under the pastor and 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 he just loved being in this church. This pastor was this 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 great preacher and he preached everywhere and powerful man of God. But one day the boy went to school and it was Father Sunday. It was Father Sunday and people were bringing their fathers in but he didn't have his father with him. Matter of fact, there was never any talk in the house about his father. So he he goes home and he says, Mama, who's my, my father? Mama said, the pastor. Pastor had a family. He's sitting in church. And he's mm -hmm. serving this man. He's mm -hmm. he finds out the pastor mm -hmm. is his father. Mm -hmm. Next Sunday, church. In the old church, after he got through preaching, the members would come around and want to shake the pastor's hand. Mm -hmm. and so he stood in line and he waited until mm -hmm. the crowd died down. He was polite and he went up to the pastor and said, May I speak with you in your office afterwards? <coughs> the pastor said, Certainly you can. I don't know if the boy's mama had talked to the pastor or not. In the foyer of the church, the little boy looks up at the pastor and says, Are you my father? Mm -hmm. And the pastor says, I'm your father. Mm -hmm said, can I have some of your time? Mm. Father, the pastor agreed and that Wednesday, he agreed to pick him up. Picks him up in a Jeep Cherokee, the boy says. The boy says at 12 years old, he had written out 12 questions mm -hmm. that he wanted to answer. Mm -hmm. Not trying to be impolite, he, was, he wanted to be cordial mm. because and so he gets in the truck with his pastor father. Father has children at home. Has a wife. Has boys at home. And he says to his dad, Am I as good as mm. your other son? Mm. It was a Wednesday night. It was about to study night. So in that Jeep Cherokee, the father makes a sharp turn. You turn. And he brings him back home. He said, you're going to mess me up. I got to preach tonight. Mm -hmm. Drop the boy back off at home. Mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes asked the question, where did you have to pass by mm -hmm. to get here? And that's the question that each of you got to answer because there have been some moments in your life and some of you are dealing with some stuff that maybe other folks don't even know you're dealing with. True, true. And this young boy grew up and he preached his very first sermon. He and his mother never left the church. Preached his very first sermon under mm -hmm. his pastor, who was his father that nobody knew. Mm -hmm. the man never really owned up to him until the end. They got a call one day and said, he said, the strangest thing for me, first of all, was he said, one of my brothers, my, my daddy's sons, I was close to him. He tried his best to take me in, but he died. And I got word that my brother had died. He said, but I had to attend the funeral. He said, you know, they sent the family on one side. Yeah. Yeah. And the community sits on the other yeah. side. He said, I had to sit with the community at my brother's funeral. Mm -hmm. Time passed, and my daddy got down and got sick. And I got a call, said, if you're going to come see him, you better come see him now. He came to the house and he was feeble. I said he tried, he feed him, he fed him, but he was too weak to eat. Mm -hmm. And he had the, he had the chair when he pressed the button, the button was standing up and he helped his dad and walked to the bed. Mm -hmm. And he said he laid in the bed with him. Mm -hmm. And he felt like a little boy laying next to his dad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the daddy said some stuff that the book T.G. Jakes had said to him earlier that you have to look at things from sometimes other folks' spot, whether they're wrong or right. So he was trapped. Mm -hmm. He was trapped between you and his wife. He was trapped between you 
and his church. And I'm sad to say he chose his church and he chose his wife over you. And on that bed, a dying man began to talk. And the boy asked him, he said, can I record this? He said, yeah, you can record it. He said, I'm sorry. He said, I was a weak man. I was too weak to admit that you were my child. I didn't want to lose my church. I didn't want to lose my wife. He said, I'm sorry. T.D. Jakes asked him again, what did you have to pass by to get here? Here's this preacher now. He's a young man. He, he's successful. People are looking at him. He, he's successful. Oh, 82 businesses. Pastors met church. Church growing still. And yet in his life, he feels like he ain't nowhere. Some of you this morning achieved some great stuff. But you walked in feeling like you're, you're nowhere. Pandemic has taken a toll on you. It's taken a toll on a lot of pastors because pastoring in the pandemic is different. And it's stressful. I, I've done more counseling sessions in the pandemic than I've done in the other 18 years of my pastor. And before I can finish pastoring someone else, I, I, before I finish counseling someone else, somebody else is beeping in because they need counseling. Then I got somebody else mad at me because I can't answer their line. And I'm being called here and I'm being called there. And then there are times when I call on you and I don't see you. And I began to question myself. And last night in that bed, I don't know why God led me there, but I couldn't. It was an hour interview and I couldn't see myself. I didn't know what was an hour here of you, but I couldn't stop it. <laughs> because like that young man, I had to ask myself, why what did you have to pass by? <laughs> get here. And ironically this morning after the baptism, I went back in the office to, to put on the shirt and I picked up this book. Not, not the picture on the book, but this page. It was just a short letter. It was written... August 20th, 2016. Mm. Six years ago. And there's a picture of me and my family on the front. 12, 6 to 7 mile island. Mm. 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 Just short letter, just, just bear with me. Over the past 15 years, Carla, Camille, and I have been blessed to enlarge our family. I had to ask myself, what have I passed by? It said, it seemed like only yesterday we stepped into a small church on the side of US 80 in Gallagher, mm -hmm. Alabama, with the intentions of not staying long. Mm -hmm. However, we've learned that God's ways are not our ways, and we thought, and his thoughts are not our thoughts. God has taught us many lessons while we serve here at the Harvard. Mm -hmm. He's shown us that as long as his hands are on our efforts, that we can accomplish much. Mm -hmm. We've seen the lives of members blessed when the church makes worship important. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We'll witness lives transformed mm -hmm. and life purposes found when the church becomes focused on the one we come to worship. Mm -hmm. God has allowed us to see what can take place when we meet less but worship more. Mm -hmm. We believe his word is true when he says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things God which is prepared for them that die. And it says, to God be the glory. Amen. What have you passed by? What have you passed by? Some of you right now in this place, you, you're thinking about throwing in the towel on something. Some of you in the place right now, and you're thinking that you're not making progress. Some of you in this place right now, and you think you're looking at your life, and you're either caught up in what didn't work yesterday, or you're too focused on what you're trying to get to, and you're missing on what God has already done and what God is doing in your presence. And like me, you, and like. 
Pastor Henderson, all of us need to stop sometime and just be thankful for all the things that we had to pass by. Some of you had to pass by not enough. Some of you had to pass by folks walking out on you. Some of you had to pass by folks dying on you. Some of you had to pass by losing some stuff you thought you couldn't live without. Some of you had to pass by people that you thought would still be here. Walked out. And if you get caught up on that, you'll miss what God is doing now. Amen. Amen. I just need that moment of honesty with you. Amen. Amen. Because I believe somebody can relate to that past I yeah. Yeah. I certainly can. And I thank God for all of you. I thank God for, for each of you. I even thank God for the ones that I don't see. I thank God for the ones I do see. I thank God for the baptism that occurred today. If you get too caught up in stuff, you'll miss out on what God does. Oh, yes. Ain't nobody, nobody do what's like him. Never forget what you had to pass by just to get here. Come on, choir, y'all sing it for us. that can testify that you know yeah. 
that our God has never lost a battle. I said he has never lost a battle. Is anybody that can prove that? Can I find these good folks in the house that know that our God has never lost a battle? Never lost a battle. Oh, man. You need to encourage somebody. Maybe the person you're sitting next to right now is going through a battle and they feel like they're about to lose and just tell our God has never lost a battle. Father, we lift your name right now. We glorify you in this place. We thank you for all you've done for us. You are marvelous and you are wonderful, God. Thank you for allowing us this privilege of coming into your house again so that we can hear what you have to say. Speak in this hour. Use this flawed vessel, take him down into your storehouse. You feed him, bring him up, and then speak through him. But hide him behind the cross that Jesus died on so we don't see him, we don't hear him. We just see and we hear you. And Father, we give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Go with me this morning to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 8. I'm just going to read one verse. Uh, we read uh, uh, verses 23 through 27 uh, in our responsive reading, pastoral reading. Um, I'm going to probably be preaching from 18 through 27, uh, but just verse 23 to draw a subject. Matthew, chapter 8, verse 23. Listen to what it says there. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Maybe so. I just want to talk this morning to you about with Jesus. With Jesus. And when, he, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Driving just over a week ago, looking through the window, I noticed for Thomas that beautiful view that the sky gave. There were peaceful skies. Y'all ever been going down the road and you just looked over at the sky and the skies brought you peace. They were calming skies. It offered me a pristine view through that window. But as I continued to drive. In just a matter of moments, Miss Barbara, the view changed. That relaxing view. That, that same wonder that shone light was now reflecting darkness. And it did not, it did not take long for the view to change. In just a matter of moments, the sky that was bright became the sky that was dark. I believe that I'm in good company this morning because many of you are familiar with just how quickly the view can change. What many of us are noticing far too often is how quickly our views of life changes. Sunny forecasts don't guarantee sunny days. Clear skies for some of us don't mean the rain isn't coming. You stay here long enough, Sister Annie Bates, you'll find out the powerful storms can come on the most beautiful days. Yeah. Days when everything seems to be going your way. Uh -huh. What I found out about storms, <laughs> Reverend Jenkins, <laughs> the beautiful skies don't keep storms from coming. All right. What life has shown us is that just because a day begins one way, doesn't mean that it'll end the same way. Mm -hmm. 
Some of you in the house right now, you know how quickly a storm can fall. Some of you know firsthand just how fast the dark clouds can cause the brightest day to vanish. Yeah. One trip down to the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. One telephone call. Mm -hmm. One text message. Mm -hmm. One trip to the mailbox. Yeah. One knock on your door. Yeah. You'll find a storm is already formed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. This is the thing, my knowledge, about storms. Mm -hmm. There's always another storm waiting. Some storms are fierce, some are small, and you have to deal with each one separately. Yeah. But you better keep your eye open. Yes, Lord. Because there might be another on the way. Amen. Amen. May I just paraphrase to Sam Jones what Job said? Man is full of trouble. Man is of a few days. And his life is full of storms. Yeah. In other words, if you stay here, bro, Justin, you got to face some storms. And this is the thing about storms, darling. The storms will change you. Yes, sir. You come out different. EJ, then you went in. You look at life different. You deal with people differently yes, after you've been through some storms. Yes. Yes. When the Lord delivers you out of a storm, yes. Yes. the things in your life that you thought were important All right. might not be as important to you anymore. Before you had to get sick, your mind was on making money. And your making money was more important to you than your family. You're making money was more important to you than your friend. Mm -hmm. But after you got sick, after you had to deal with that storm, yes, Lord. you learn to God first, mm -hmm. family next, yeah. and then everything else. Yeah. Right. Before you experience the storm of not having money, mm -hmm. you thought that having the latest this or that mm -hmm. was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. But after the storm, you learn that having peace of mind oh, yeah. Yeah. is better than anything new. True, right. True. The storms not only change how we look at life, yeah. the storms also prove something else. Mm -hmm. The storms prove that we can't go through life without having help. All right. All right. All right. All right. Sometimes it's the storm. To make us realize that we need God. Yes, yes. Thank you. Not, not just being on some church road. My mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. not, not just being in some called relationship with God. My mind. All right. But relying on God. All right. <laughs> Trust in God. Yeah. Right. Have faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. Reality. Kendra, that's all that a walk with God is. Yeah. It's just a faith walk. Yeah. When a believer says, I'm, I'm with God, he or she is only saying, I'm relying on God. Yeah. Relying on God because I know I need God and I yeah. cannot make it without myself. The believer understands that, that because there's a storm with my name. Mm. All right. All right. There's a storm that's always waiting on me. Yes. That I do better in the storm Woo. with him right. than I could ever do in the storm yeah. without him. Am I talking to anybody yeah. this morning? Yeah. No, we don't have a volunteer for a storm. Mm. All right. No, nobody ever gets in line and says, send a storm my way. All right. Because we know the storms are painful. Yeah. They know we know the storms, they toss us and they drive us and they rearrange our lives. Yeah. We also know that we just do bad in the storm. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
with him. With him. All right. All right. With him. We are reminded that all things work together. All yeah. right. For good. Uh-huh. For them. Thank you, sir. The love. Uh-huh. Call according to his purpose. Yeah. Uh-huh. Please understand me. I want you to understand. God doesn't cause no storms. Okay. Right. God doesn't cause the storms. Uh-huh. But God can use every storm. Yes. Oh, yes. I don't want you to leave here saying I told you something wrong. God doesn't cause the storms. Uh-huh. But he can certainly use the storms. All right. That means that you're walking with God. Yes, sir. God will use the storms you enter. And he'll work them out for your good. All right, all right. God pulls something out of the storm. Say it, say it. That'll help you. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, he didn't cause it. He didn't, he didn't cause, cause it. it. But he'll use it. He didn't, he didn't cause that trouble you in, but he'll use it. All right. He didn't cause the pain you're feeling, but he'll use it. Yeah. He didn't cause the death you had to go through, but Lord knows he'll use yeah. it. Sometimes he uses the storms yes, that we're in to teach us lessons My God. like he does in the text. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ironically, and whenever that's where we meet the disciples this morning. My Lord. Uh-huh. The same place many of us are in. Uh-huh. The text says in verse 23, Jesus got in the boat. And they followed him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Verse 24 says, Storm came. Mm-hmm. Maybe you missed it. Mm-hmm. They're following Jesus, but they're in. Mm-hmm. A storm. Yeah. They're with Jesus, but in. A storm. A storm. Mm-hmm. Let me just set the record straight. Being with Jesus won't stop every storm. But being with him makes a world of difference if you're in a storm. All right. All right. Yes. See, in the pretext, Sister Ellen, yes, the disciples were headstrong on following Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got caught up in his glory. But he was healing the sick. He, he took a woman that had fever and he brought the fever down and he didn't even give her any calendar. All right. He, he cast out demons and he was doing all these good things, but, but the glory don't always tell the story. All right. So he says in verse 20, he says, foxes have holes and yeah. birds of the net of the air have nests, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Like this down, Walker. With Jesus takes faith. With Jesus takes faith. Alright. If you ask young folks in his season, saint. If you ask a believer who been here for a while, they all tell you that you can't follow Jesus without faith. Because there's going to be some times in your life when you cannot see your way. There'll be some times when it appears that you don't have what you need. There's going to be some times when it's going to feel like everything is falling apart. There'll be some times in the natural it looks like things ain't going to work out. Time for the birds and the foxes. Mm-hmm. Don't seem better off than you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right, now. The things in your life, young folk, can happen one day when money can't fix it. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Don't oh, we know? Oh, mercy. Grandma can't get you out of it. Yes, Lord. Mama can't make no phone call. Yes. And you ain't going to have no friends to help you. Mm-hmm. And the only thing you're going to be left with, child, is God. Mm-hmm. If you got it. All right, now. Yeah. Only thing you're gonna be left with is your is your faith in God. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's all right, but see him because the scripture said it's impossible <laughs> to please God for yeah. Caesar without faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you. God. Thank you. The believer can make it without money. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. That's what they don't understand about you. We can make it without our health. Yeah. But because we, we can't make it without God. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yes. With Jesus means I got to trust him when I can't see my way. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When I'm sick, I got to trust him. Yeah. When, I, when I'm broke, I got to trust him. Oh, when I don't know. 
know what to do. I still got to trust him. Because I know he. Yes. Thank you, Lord. But can we almost say, just be honest for a moment? Hello, man. For the sake of our younger saints. All right. It ain't always easy trusting God. Oh, no. True. True. Oh, no. Don't, don't, don't build this false sense of security around your children. No, no. Don't make it, don't make it seem like walking with God is easy. All right. It ain't always easy to rap and trust in God. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I ain't blaming God for it, but the little boy, that, that boy was cussing. And he went home, and Mama said, Why are you cussing so much? He said, I just made. You made, you know, made. See, when God made Adam, God put Adam over everything. Except Adam. Yeah. He, he, put, he put Adam in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. Except Adam. He said, Adam, when it come to you now. Yeah. All right. He said, you're going to tell that bucket what to do. You tell that cow what to eat. You do all that. But when it come to you, Adam, yeah. Yeah. you got to rely on me. You got to look to me. Hello. Adam, you got to take your head off your problem. And you gotta allow me to put my hand on you. I'm talking to somebody. Allow me to put my hand on your problem. Yes. Yes. Why, Tracy? Yes. Verse 23. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Watch this sound. Uh -huh. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with but, but, he was sleeping. You ain't with me. You ain't with me. You ain't with me. I wish you were with me because you could stop me right now. <laughs> there rolled a great storm. In so much that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was sleep. All right. I'm with Jesus secondly. All right now. I know. Because his sleep isn't affected by what makes me panic. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My love. His sleep is not affected by what makes me panic. Uh -huh. Verse 24 says, there arose a storm. Yeah. Verse 24 says, the ship was covered with waves. Mm -hmm. Verse 24 says, but he was sleep. All right, now. Verse 25 says, the disciples came to him. Uh -huh. And they woke him. Yeah. And they said, Lord, save us. Uh -huh. We pay. Verse 24 says, he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. Verse 25, the disciples were panicking. Yeah, yeah. The disciples are a picture of us. The text says they are panicking. Yeah. But Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> it was storm. Yeah. But Jesus was sleeping. I wish I had a preacher. Right. The boat was covered. Yeah. But Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> See, if by chance you came to this house this morning and you feel that you're the storm is covering you, yeah. I suggest you make sure. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. You're with him. That you got the one on board. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That the yeah. was causing you to panic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy. Yeah. He can handle right, it. Brother. He can handle it because That's all right, man. what upsets us, Lord Kim, what messes us up, what discombobulates us, yeah. what worries us, no match for him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God. What's gonna throw us off course? Uh -huh. They can draw they can't throw him off course. See that? Uh -huh. Thank you, you see, God. the storm was stronger than the disciples. Uh -huh. But it wasn't in the match right. for the one they had on board. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody wanna know why you made up your mind. Yeah. That you're gonna follow him. Yeah. You need to go back and tell him. Oh, no. 
Because what makes me panic does not affect his sleep. What I found out about the storm yes, sir. Mm -hmm. is that it will also cause us to do what the disciples did. Yeah. Uh -huh. It caused them to call on him. All right. Now, again, he doesn't cause our storms. Mm -hmm. But I told you he will use the storm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He uses them often to put us in a position mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. where we are forced to call on him. Yes. All right. All right. Thank we are forced now mm -hmm. to look to him. Mm -hmm. he, he, will, he will allow the storm mm -hmm. that we happen to be in mm -hmm. just to get us to call to him. My Lord, Lord mm -hmm. save me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody in the house I'll be free for. <laughs> Anybody in the house ever get caught up in a storm? Yeah. And the only thing you had left to do was to call yeah. on him. Yeah. And all you got to paraphrase what you said to him. Lord, help me. Yeah. Lord, if you don't help me, I ain't going to make it. I'm talking to somebody. You got something in common with these disciples. Anybody right. in here got something going on in your life that you know you can't have? Yes, Lord. I got some good news for you. Uh -huh. If you're on board with you, uh -huh. right. you're going to be all right. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Father God. Lord God. Verse 26. <laughs> and he said unto them, Uh -huh. You ain't with me yet. Mm -hmm. The ship 
was covered yes. with waves. Yes. Yes. The truth is, all of us go through moments yes. where our personal ships yes. Yes. are covered yes. with waves. Oh, yes. oh, yes. See, waves. Take your man off of Orange Beach right here. <laughs> Waves can come in various shapes, forms, and fashions. Yes, sir. Six. Remember the wave. Yeah. Problems in your home. Yeah. Ain't nothing but a wave. Mm -hmm. Problems down at that job place. Ain't nothing but a wave. Debt. That ain't nothing but a wave. Mm -hmm. In your home, mm -hmm. that ain't nothing but a wave. Yeah. But I told you earlier that while the waves are beating against us, mm -hmm. while the waves are robbing us of our strength, yeah. while the waves seem to be overtaking us, what's Jesus doing? Speaking. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, because you're following him, mm -hmm. he's in the boat with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, God. And if you are with him, mm -hmm. and you happen to be in the storm, mm -hmm. he's in the storm mm -hmm. with you. Oh, thank you, my Lord. Mm. Glory. All right. All right. Don't you ever forget mm. that when a believer is in a storm, yes. that the believer is never alone. True. Amen. Thank you, God. You see. We don't go through storms alone. And though it sometimes feels like we are by ourselves, we, because we are with Him, we are never in a storm alone. In verse 25, they call on the one that they're with. All right. In verse 26, he simply calms what's making them panic. Oh, yes. He calms what's frightening them. Uh -huh. Can you see the disciples watching Jesus? All right. <laughs> Can you see the disciples watching him calm the storm? All right. That is a reward <laughs> for following him. Oh yeah, my. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. He gives us a front row seat All right. while he's doing his work. All right. Anybody in the house ever watch God work? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Somebody that testify yeah. he'll work on sickness, he yeah. works on diabetes, he'll work on cancer, he can work on your marriage, he can work on your children, he can even work on your family. He worked on sick folks. Thank you. Yes. He worked on demon possessed folks. All right. He even yep. worked on dead folks. All right. Oh, yes. He did his best work <laughs> on a hill called Catherine. All right. All right. Thank you. He did his very best work. Thank you. On a hill called Catherine. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, he took my sin. Oh, yeah. And it took your sin. Yes. And it took our sin. Yes. Yeah. Upon his shoulder. All right. My Lord. The Bible says mm. that the one who had no sin yeah. Yeah. died for all sins. All right. All right. They took him off that old water cross yeah. and they put him in a tomb. Mm. But we rejoice because we know that he didn't stay in. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Rose from the grave. Yeah. Looked at the grave. <laughs> said, Death. Where is your sin? Yeah. All right. Oh, Gray. All right. Where is your victory? Yeah. Declare all power. All power. Not some power. Yeah. But all power all power. is in my hand. Yeah. Aren't you glad yeah. that you are with the one who got all power all right. in his hand? Yeah. 
If you're here this morning and you've not accepted our Lord and our Savior as your Lord and Savior, we extend to you this morning an invitation to simply come on the Lord's side. The door of our church is open. If you've never expressed or never expected Him as your personal Savior, take a step forward this morning. Profess out of your mouth that you believe that Jesus died for you. That his death was enough to save you. That's all. second Tuesday at 6 o'clock. Please help spread the word. This might be for you, might be for someone you know. Uh, we will start our grief and, and lost classes again here at Mount Olive at 6 o'clock on next Tuesday. You need to spend so much death even in lost within our church and in our community. And so we want to start that back up. If you know anyone, including yourself, that might be helped by that ministry, come on out and take advantage of it. Uh, a lot of times we have things that are offered in our area, and uh, and then we, we don't take advantage of it, and then it stops. And sometimes well, we need this, but we had it, but the only only way we can keep it is you have to support it. Yeah. Amen. So Amen. we help, help spread the word on the second Tuesday. Now many of you are calling, and many of our young folks are asking for it uh, on the fourth Tuesday at six o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a therapist. Our licensed therapist will be here to deal with them about mental health. 
and issues that they are facing. So if you have some young folk, young folk, young adults, uh, uh, come out and be in that club. Bring them out. Bring them here on the fourth Tuesday at six o'clock. On the fourth Tuesdays at six o'clock, that's when that's going to be offered. And so we have two classes: second Tuesday at six. That's our grief and loss class, and the fourth Tuesday at six uh, for our mental health for our young folk. And we have a young a young counselor. Uh, she's licensed, trained, and Christian based. Uh, she's professionally trained, and so she's uh, an aid to that our young folks can relate to. So I want you to please come out and be a part of that. Now, this morning, um, we were blessed here at Mount Olive because uh, Mount, uh, through Mount Olive this morning, the kingdom of God got expanded. Amen. 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 We took our new sister, Sister Kendra Benison. She was baptized. Kendra, in a moment, in a moment I'm going to ask you to come forth because you're going to partake. There are two ordinances within our church. One is baptism. Baptism just relates to the, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. It means that you identify with that. There's another ordinance of the church, and this ordinance is what Jesus told us to do. Uh, before his death, he gathered those that were closest to him, and he told us he was about to, about to lay his life down for our sins. And as an act of appreciation and honor to what he was going to do for them, he said he, at that communion table, he said, as often as you drink of this cup and eat this bread, what you're really doing is that you are just remembering and you are honoring the fact that it was me that saved you. Uh, and so this morning, you will take part of a holy communion for the first time. And you are just, a, you are just following the second ordinance of the church. So um, at this time, I want to ask you to come forward. And uh, I'm going to put my mask back on and come down. And I'm going to present to you, I'll get you to stand right there. I'm going to try to have as less face to face contact with you as I can. Get you right here. I'm going to present to you a certificate of baptism. Uh, it just says that you were bat uh, baptized today here at Mount Olive. It also has a mission. This is what our church is about. We, we recite this each and every Sunday. Uh, this tells you what we're about. We're going to take you to our new members class also. Uh, and let you know what your responsibilities are as a member of the household of faith. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to come down in, in a moment, and then we're going to give you the long song. That it was always, it would be disrespectful to have a body, to have a body, a dead body uncovered. And so, in a moment, we're going to uncover this dead body because this dead body is unlike any other body. Yeah. Uh, this this dead body uh, is doesn't even desire to be dead. Doesn't doesn't supposed to be dead. Uh, he didn't do anything to be dead to die. Uh, he's only dead because of things that we have done. Uh, he became a sacrifice or a substitute for us. And so he took on our sins because we were not able to handle our sins ourselves. And so he took on the penalty for our sins. The Bible says, through one man, sin entered the world, and the wage of sin is death. So one man brought death to the whole world. But thank God, another man came, uh, a greater man came, and that was Jesus. He took on the penalty for that sin so that we don't have to die and die eternally and go to hell. So I'm going to uncover this. 
and expose his body. Now, of course, we know this is bread and this is wine, but symbolically they represent both the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Okay? So the Bible says that at that last supper, that last meal, as because he was a master teacher, that when he got to the bread, he stopped. And when he got to the wine, he stopped again. And he began to teach, he began to teach those uh, disciples. And he told them that that bread, again, just represents my body. He says, this wine you're about to drink, it represents my blood. And he says, as often as you partake of it, you just show it off. And so for the very first time today, that's what you're going to do as a believer. You're going to show honor to God for what he's done. So I'm going to ask you to take one cup. I'll take the other. You have to peel it back. You expose the bread. And you close the bread. You put it back again. You expose the wine. So the Bible says that before, he, before they ate it, he blessed it. So we're going to pray first. Father, we, uh, we realize that this is just earthly bread, and we realize this is just earthly wine, but we realize that they represent both your body and your blood. And Father, we are thankful that you laid down your body, and we're thankful that you shed your blood for our sins. And Father, we're thankful today for Kendra as she's coming into the household of faith, and we pray that she'll continue to walk with you. And we know, Father, that, uh, that you'll never leave her and you'll never forsake her. We thank you, Father, for doing for us what we could not do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, first, he took the bread, he blessed it, he told them to eat it. This is my body. In like manner, he took the wine, he says, you drank, this is my blood. And the Bible says, after they finish eating, that they, they sung songs and they fellowship. Mm -hmm. Now, Kendra, I don't know how large your personal family is, uh, but now you have a larger family. Oh, <laughs> and I want you to turn around and meet your new family. This is just part of it. Now, normally, before pre-pandemic, we would come around and shake your hand. We're not going to do that today. They just simply going to wave at you and say, welcome to the family. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to dismiss with song, and we'll be dismissed from this place. Thank y'all for coming, and thank you for being a part of the worship experience here tonight. Amen. Y'all will lead us in song as we dismiss. Amen.